How you doing, everybody? Welcome back to The Highway with Kyle Shutt. I am Kyle Shutt, and it is such a pleasure to be talking to you today. I have got a treat for you. I wrangled up Mr. K.K. Downing of Judas Priest to uh, talk about our guitar heroes and uh, just see what life was like back in the, the early days of heavy metal. Blew my mind. As always, if you like what you've been hearing on the program, hit that follow button, smash that subscribe tab. You do what you got to do to make sure that you don't miss a single episode. And if you want to go one step further, you can find us at patreon.com slash the highway. And for a few bucks a month, you can help me keep these lights on, keep these interviews coming, and even get yourself a shout out. This week, we have a couple of bands we're going to shout out. Uh, everybody, go check out El Coyote, or El Coyote, depending on where you're from. But El Coyote is great. Uh, another fantastic band called Van Groover. Uh, these bands have been uh, throwing down at the Patreon and just really helping uh, keep this going, and I, I can't thank y'all enough. And uh, we also got to give some mad love to our sponsors, Heil Sound, because if you like the way I sound, it's because there's a Heil in front of me. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I want to hear from some goddamn heavy metal royalty. Let's do things my way. The Highway. How are you doing, Kyle? I'm doing fine, Mr. K. K. Downing. Thank you so much for coming on the highway. I really appreciate it. No problem, Kyle. And uh, yeah, just uh, of course, uh, you're well known from Judas Priest fame, and uh, but also your new project, uh, KK's Priest, uh, just put out an album about two weeks ago, a Sermons of the Sinner, and I got to say, it is absolutely blistering, fantastic work. Thank you very much, Kyle. I'm glad you like it. And you're no slouch. Uh, I mean, that that guitar work is absolutely stunning, uh, especially on songs like "Return of the Sentinel" and stuff. I was just curious. Um, after so many years and so many classic solos, how do you um, how do you approach making new solos? Um, I just usually try and do something I haven't done before. To be fair, and I think I've uh, I think that's been achieved on this record. There's all sorts of things going on with some harmony tapping. There's kind of um, Three note arpeggios, or um, where every note is is hit on the downstroke, which is unusual. So it's nice to be able to kind of uh, push the boundaries, Kyle. You know, uh, with solo stuff, but a lot of stuff, to be honest, I just I, I just ad libbed, you know, and um, I just improvise them really. Um, but obviously, there's a lot of cool stuff me and AJ get into together. Absolutely, I, I love. Um just improvising, making stuff up on the spot uh, in the studio. And then I usually just try to wing a few and then I find something I kind of like and latch onto. And then I try to perfect it and uh, get the best performance yeah, I, I can. Yeah. I, I actually did when I was doing the demos, when I, even when I was on my own, I, I would often just put a solo in there just to, um, just to fill the space, you know what I mean? To mm -hmm. make it sound a bit more complete. And then of course, I, I ended up using quite a few of them, to be honest. You know, it's amazing stuff I just improvised at the very beginning. And um, and I just used them. You know, like... I know what you mean when you listen to your demos over and, and all of a sudden the solo just starts to become part of the song. <laughs> yeah, you, you just get used to it and you think, you know what, I think it sounds pretty good. And you, I just used it, so that's pretty cool. Absolutely. What's it like uh, playing with Ripper again? Unless... Yeah, yeah, well, you know, I mean, like I say, he's, Ripper's very unique, isn't it? There's not many vocalists on the planet that can do what he does, you know. Obviously, you've got Rob, Ripper, Ralph Shapers, he's very good, the German um, metal star, and, you know, but there's not too many people that have, have pipes like these guys, is the reader, you know, and Ripper's, you know, I mean, arguably you know, the best, I mean, he's right up there and he just seems to be getting better, you know, with <laughs> age. Yeah, y'all too, uh, just, uh, th like I said, this album is just uh, uh, 11 out of 10, so loud, so fast. I was really, really impressed. You didn't pull any punches at all. Uh, anybody <laughs> out there that needs uh, some uh, uh, dose of heavy metal in your life, go check out Sermons of the Sinner. Um, can we expect to see you on the road? I know uh, the world is uh, still a bit upside down, but uh, do you have any touring plans? 
yes, call as soon as somebody sends us a ticket, we'll be up straight off the bed, you know. We, our suitcases are packed, ready to go. So, yeah, hopefully we can come and play as soon as possible for you guys. I would love to see it. Yeah, we, uh, my band, The Sword, just got off a, about a month-long tour with uh, Primus over here. And uh, I got to say, it's a different world out there uh, touring, even you know, just from a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, it's uh, going to be interesting to see how it all unfolds uh, with the festivals across Europe and the States and, and uh, all the club shows. Every, everywhere's got um, different protocols and guidelines. It's uh, it, I, I'm, Honestly, it's a mess. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Oh, mate, mate, that must have been a blast being out there with Primus. For it, sure. It really was, yeah, um, because they were doing um, an entire Rush set. They played A Farewell to Kings in its entirety every night. And, uh, no why? It was absolutely stunning. Um, I mean, I I had a hard time watching it at first just because I was so nervous for them. I mean, you, <laughs> you try to tackle a Rush album, note for note, yeah, you know, I'm, it's that's a, a hefty I'm, job. Oh, mate, so honestly, I'll have to check. Is there some of that stuff on YouTube, is that? I believe so, yeah. You, there, you should be able to find it. There was... I saw a lot of cameras um, out there. Mate, uh, it's, it's such a coincidence. I've just been playing a few Primus tracks just recently, you know. You, are you a fan? Well, they, they just pop up on my um, on my uh, on my phone, you know. But like I say, I have checked them out before, you know. I mean, because they're just um, they're good, good to watch, you know. It's. Uh, some pretty cool stuff, yeah. Great musicians, though, aren't they? They're Absolutely. Great, you know? Yeah, and then... I, I, just, I mean, so much fun and so much a- attitude, you know, you know, with those guys, John the Fisherman, and the toys The toys go winding down. I hadn't heard that one before until the other day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's not another band like them out there, for sure. No. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, we're kind of winding back the clock a little bit. Um, I'm from Texas, and uh, I know you guys, uh, it seems like I've heard a lot of your uh, live recordings uh, from San Antonio, which is actually where I was born. And um, th- these days, I wouldn't say that San Antonio is as much of a, a heavy metal mecca as it used to be. But in the 80s, the, the the legend was that San Antonio was the heavy metal capital of the U.S. Um, is that how you felt? I know you guys kind of had a special relationship with the South. Um, what was it like? Yeah, it, ab- it ab- absolutely was because the radio station, which the name escapes me now, but... Um a couple of the joys in the guys involved. There was, I think, it was Joe Anthony was one of the guys, and um, you know, it was a long time ago, but I can remember that. Yes, yeah, San Antonio was a massive metal stronghold for bands like Judas Priest in the early days, Budgie, you know, and um, even Zeppelin when they first kicked off, you know, but. Um, yeah, so we would go to America and we would play, we would play uh, the arena there, you know, mm. in San Antonio. And all of the other shows were clubs or small theaters at the most, you know. So, but yeah, so uh, very, very fond memories. That's incredible. I wish I could have seen that. Yeah, you, you really got to enjoy the heyday of um, heavy metal and rock and roll being at the top of the charts uh, just all over the world. Um not to say that uh, I'm not still happy to be out here rocking, but man, that, that must have been incredible. Yeah, certainly, certainly was. Obviously, yeah, coming to the states. I mean, you can imagine what it was like for us as a young band turning the clock to be able to set us sail to the states, and uh, and I mean, it's so big, it's endless. It's like another world, isn't it? You know, mm-hmm. I mean, we were so so excited to come over there and play for you guys and. Obviously, it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience for for decades now. You know, that's wild. Yeah, uh, well, how how did it compare to the the rest of the world? Yeah, well, you know, America was a massive stronghold, wasn't it? Because everything was seemed to be so much easier in the states. You know, you could play a lot of shows back to back. You know, and like going from going from states. One state to another was like for us going from one country to another because I think even New York State state is probably the size of uh, of, of the UK, <laughs> you know. So or going to like California, Texas, and you know Florida, those states are like multiple times bigger than our own country, you know. So um, and obviously the radio was very very important, wasn't it? Because 
radio was just massive everywhere, you know, rock radio. That's uh, pretty much how I found out about music when I was young was the radio and uh, MTV. And uh, you guys were definitely all over uh, MTV. Um, watching that culture um, kind of develop out of the 70s and into the 80s, how, do you think that was really important for y'all as well? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, we didn't have radio back in the UK, but, you know, it, it was all about... Because America was... Where it was unique was America was really... It was essential to have a car in America, you know, uh, at whatever age, you know, to be able mm -hmm. to get around. And obviously, everybody had a player in the car. And so, and that's why radio, you know, because you're in the car, you're commuting or whatever, it's dead time. You know, you put the radio on and, um, you know, without annoying other people for the most part, whereas <laughs> uh, other countries... You know, if you wanted to play the radio, you played it in the family home, and everybody was always going, turn on that rubbish off, you know, and and so it was hard work, you know. Uh, and that's why I think that uh, the States really led the way, really, um, in the uh, majestic rock decades. Absolutely. What well, uh, I know, um, I've, I've read that you're a, a huge Jimi Hendrix fan, and uh, who's not? But uh, it, was he, who do you think uh, was one of the people that made you want to pick up the guitar? Or like, who, who were some of your early, uh, you know, heroes that made you think, I could totally yeah, do this? Yeah. Jimmy was the big one. Well, I saw him in 67. Wow. I saw him, I saw him, I think about six, six or seven times, um, luckily. And, uh, but yeah, it was, it, you know, I'd heard lots of good bands and players before before seeing Jimi Hendrix, you know, The Cream, etc., and John Mel's Blues Breakers uh, and tons of other bands. Um, but really, um, seeing Hendrix, it wasn't just the playing, it was his showmanship, it was his charisma, it was just everything, but more than anything else, it was the ingredients he had that, to me, sounded like heavy metal. You know, the songs, the uh, power, power riffs that he would play in, in Foxy Lady and uh, songs like Purple Haze and that, you know. So that was pretty pretty electrifying, you know. So, um, yeah, no wonder with, in your, with young ears like mine, you know, and influential minds, it was bound to... Uh, have an influence, you know. That's incredible. How big were those shows back then when you saw them? Were they, were they just little clubs, or had he sort of hit by then? I, I saw it. The first two shows were in theaters, good-sized theaters, probably 2,000 capacity, maybe a little bit more, you know, um, all seated venues. Um, so that was good. You know, uh, I saw the two shows at the Royal Albert Hall, which seats about, that, those dates were back to back, and the Royal Albert Hall seats about five and a half thousand. God. You know, I saw him at the Old White Music Festival in 1970, early 70s, so obviously that was massive. You know, I saw him at Wogan Abbey Music Festival, that was massive. You know, so so yeah, I never saw him in a, in a real small club, which I would love to, to to be honest. Yeah, but um, man, that's that. I wish I could have caught some of that stuff. Uh, I'm I'm lucky to have seen everything I have, but there's so much that I missed. Uh, it's it's awesome hearing about it. Thank you for sharing. Um, did you ever get to meet him or anything like that? I kind of did in a way, but just as a fan, you know, when I was at uh, when I was at uh, the Isle of Wight Music Festival, um, Jimmy had they just woken up, I think, because it was early hours of the morning. He, he went on very late, but he was sat round uh, a table with Mitch and Noel and two ladies uh, in, in what we call like an old style trailer caravan, you know, uh -huh. that, which were they using as a dressing room. And me and my mate, we lifted up the window, which was open, and uh, and I just said, because we were like dumbfounded, oh, Jimmy, you know, uh, can you sign something for us, you know? So we got a, sign, a signed drumstick off Mitch. I got an, an empty Coca-Cola bottle, which Jimmy had just 
uh, drunk out of. So that was a good uh, experience, literally. And then at the Royal Albert Hall, I managed to get his autograph backstage, outside, you know, when he was entering the show. There was just about four or five of us there, you know, so that was lucky. That's incredible. I was, uh, the, the saying is with people usually uh, never meet your heroes, but I think that's uh, nonsense. I, I've, I always say always meet your heroes. Uh, that's, that's amazing. Uh, are there any other uh, guitar heroes that, that you got to meet uh, of yours? Yeah, lots along the way. You know, I mean, we got to do some shows the one year uh, with, uh, with Humble Pie in support, you know. So Stevie Marriott was one of my long, big heroes, you know, from when I was at school. It, when he was in a band called The Small Faces, you know, oh, yeah. um, even though they were kind of a pop band, uh, you know, I could sense that Stephen Marriott had some attitude, you know, and uh, and he certainly did. And uh, so that was great, you know. But yeah, yeah I got a lot. There's so, been so many of them along the way. I've been very fortunate to meet so many people, you know. Um, but whether it's Jimmy Page or... You know, I mean, it just the list goes on. Yeah, so I've been lucky, really. You know, you you play you play all these festivals, and you always get you know you get to meet people. You know, yeah, you never know uh, who you're going to find yourself in an elevator with at the hotel later. You yeah, <laughs> there's, there's still people. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, we played on a we played at the Zoom Club with the with the Scorpions. When they were uh, they were a support band to a Canadian singer, a lady called Mama Lion, way back in about nineteen seventy, I think. Wow. Um, Uli Roth was playing then. I didn't meet him that night, you know, but obviously other other guys, Michael, Matt, and Rudy, become good friends. Oh, yeah, it's a big mix and match, and that, and that is a good. That, 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 and that's where Brothers of the Road, the song comes in, really. We are all Brothers of the Road. You know, we go, we go spinning around the world all of our lives, and then suddenly we think, oh, we haven't done that for a while. I miss it. I want to do it again. And that's where KK's Priest is at right now. That's awesome. Yeah, I, even taking the few years off that we did just because of COVID and stuff like that, it felt so good to be get, uh, getting back out on the road on those stages, you know, where we belong. Uh, it just fills you with life. Certainly does, mate. So we'll get out there as soon as the promoters can get their stuff together and send us a ticket, and we'll be there. <laughs> um, man, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's, it's crazy to think about. Yeah, just all those years. Uh, it's, th- that's great to hear about the Scorpions. Uh, I absolutely love those early Scorpions records. Uh, they're they sound more yeah, like too. Santana or like some kind of like psychedelic groovy stuff. It wasn't quite like the the '80s metal sound that everyone kind of you know thinks about whenever they think about Scorpions. Yeah, yeah. I, those very early albums, I, you know, I suggest everybody tries to check them out, you know, um, in trance and even before then, you know, songs like Will Burn the Skies and Sails of Sharon and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know, if you're a guitar player, guitar player you know, um, it would be good to uh, check that, that stuff out, you know. Absolutely. And uh, I know that, um, you know, obviously, guitar is a huge passion uh, in your life, but um, I love uh, seeing you, uh, you know, invest uh, back in your community with uh, the, the steel mill and, uh, and also the, uh, uh, the golf course that I read that you uh, designed. Uh, that's pretty wild. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, it's, it's just what you do on a day off, really. He's like, you know, build a golf course. But I guess I'm like... Um, yeah, there's lots of us guys around, Alice Cooper, and, you know, um, it's just something cool to do on the day off, isn't it, really? You, you know, get out of the hotel and go and hit something. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I I had never golfed until about a month ago. I got invited out to the the Bally High uh, golf course out in Las Vegas, and I got to say, I had a fantastic time. Yeah, it's a good, good, fun stuff to do, but, you know, um, yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, getting to design um, your own course, though, I mean, is are there any similarities between, like, making a heavy metal album and designing a golf course? Like, is there any, like, <laughs> common ground none, there? No, <laughs> not, none whatsoever, I don't think. <laughs> I really don't know. But you see, I've been very fortunate traveling in the world, you know, around the States and Canada, Hawaii and that. And, and I, I've got some good memories, you know, of... Uh, 
and also with other guys in the band, you know, it's, it's amazing, you know, I mean, like Jonathan Kane from uh, Journey, you know, he, he plays, you know, we get together now and again, and, you know, and, um, and yeah, there's lots of people that have asked me to play, I've never made the connection, you know, but I will. Yeah, it's a, uh... It's tough sometimes because, like, we uh, ride around in a, in a little, you know, van in a trailer and stuff. There's not a whole lot of extra room for, for clubs and <laughs> things like that. Also, we we can't really afford many days off, so uh, m- maybe one of these days I'll I'll take a trip, and uh, hit some different golf courses. We'll see. Mm. Yeah, I can recommend it, and uh, I'm playing tennis as well. That's what we did. It was mainly myself and Glenn that were kind of the but we were told any sport you know you know we totally into our sports really we used to throw a frisbee around a lot uh we uh, did a, a pretty sizable tour with metallica a few years ago and uh yeah playing the arenas and stuff like that you found ourselves in these just massive you know empty parking lots and uh, you can really sail a frisbee uh pretty far yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the rule was you had to have a beer in your hand uh, while you were doing it yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so you've been pretty busy yourself you know i'm gonna have to check your what what was your band name again i'm gonna have to check you it's out. called the sword you might like it you you, you know it's it, it won't offend me if you don't but uh if you like loud guitars and uh you know groovy beats uh, you might dig it um, yeah uh, a lot of people uh, compare us to to sabbath and, and things like that but um Oh, cool. I, I always, I always liked. Uh, I always thought we were a little bit more like Rush or Thin Lizzy or something. But uh, I don't know. Yeah, you, you might dig it. Um, uh, the the one song um, that I, I used to love from y'all uh, on Sin After Sin was a Dissident Aggressor. It kind of has that yeah, yeah. sort of a gallopy uh, beat to yeah. it. Um, did you ever hear uh, Slayer's cover of that? Um, no. It was a. Uh, it was on South of Heaven. Uh, that Slayer record. Uh, yeah, they did a pretty fantastic cover of that. If you never heard it, it's pretty. <laughs> it's pretty great. Well, I'll check it out. Uh, I heard that they did a song. I'm not sure if I heard it. You know, but mm-hmm. maybe I did way way back then. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, what do you, if if you can recall, what do you think the biggest show you ever played was? Like how many people? Oh, definitely. Well, like like I say, the, the biggest. Well, it's it's arguably um, live aid, I suppose, because that was that was that was televised all over the world. But uh, the US Festival in San Bernardino was massive, you know. But um, our own show uh, headlining, I think we played Tacoma Dome the one year. There was a lot of people there, you know. I mean. Um, I had no idea, but, you know, it was uh, a lot of people because that place is huge, isn't it, you know? Massive. Yeah, it, it, ne- it never gets old that you're seeing that many people just crammed in together. Yeah, yeah. Are, are you working on new stuff already? Or are you kind of uh, taking a break? Yes. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Every chance I get. I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, um, getting on with the next record, really. Yeah, especially while we have this downtime. Uh, good to yeah. get some stuff in the can just so you have it <clears throat> when you're ready to go. There's yeah. nothing worse than uh, being asked to do something and you don't have any yeah. <laughs> any material. <laughs> yeah, through the winter as well. It's not a bad thing, you know. When the weather's terrible, you can uh, get on with it. Absolutely. And um, yeah, I saw the, uh, was, uh, back in 2018 you uh, released a memoir, and uh, I'm, I'm actually currently working on a bit of one myself. Uh, it's not going to be obviously as, as grandiose. Uh, a little bit more of like um, just you know, silly tour stories and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, h- how did you uh, find that challenge, uh, writing a book? Yeah, it's something different, really. You know, um, it was it was um, it was definitely interesting. Really, it was quite time consuming. Um, but I'm glad I did it because I just wanted fans to get to know me a little bit better really because you know fans knew of me but i didn't think that they you know not necessarily you know have an insight to to me and my life and my personality really mm-hmm. yeah it is um uh, it, it definitely is way more difficult than i thought it would be when i first sat down to just stare at a blank page and try to write something um yeah yeah <laughs> not 
uh, like playing guitar at all, uh, unfortunately. But that's okay. Um, yeah, I can't. Uh, I, I picked it up. I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but I cannot wait to tear through it. Um, and uh, yeah, just uh, see. Yeah, just get that insight into to what those days were like. Um, do you have any uh, any tour stories? You think that jumped out that uh, you you feel like sharing? It's been my whole life, hasn't it? You know, right. um, I think uh, a lot of the real, real cool stuff really happened when we were very young, you know, before we actually got a record deal. I think that's when it was pretty tortuous, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, um, you do a lot of things, don't you? You know, clean your teeth in the snow and get in the back of the van to go to sleep <laughs> and, you know, in the middle of Norway in the in, in the middle of winter, you think to yourself, what what compelled us to do that sort of thing? You know, I mean, it's a wonder we're still alive to tell the tale. Yeah. Yeah. How difficult was it to get around back in those days, in the early, early days? Well, you know, we, transport was okay, but didn't you find that the, the, the band's van was never big enough for everything? There was never <laughs> enough room. Never enough room for everything, really, you know. But, uh, but yeah, we made it through. You know, we went from one size van to another and, and worked our way up the ranks, you know. Um, yeah, it's been a, a lifetime of torture, but we wouldn't have changed anything for right. the world. I believe it. Yeah, how uh, how bad did, did those leather outfits smell after a whole tour? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty bad before we had a wardrobe lady, that's for sure. <laughs> I can only imagine. Well, um, I always ask our musical guests uh, that come on if they want to play a song uh, toward the end of the program. Is there anything, uh, any favorite track off of uh, Sermons of the Center that uh, you think you want to play? No, I'm happy to play anything from that, uh, from the album, anything at all that you'd like to play, but... Yeah, I gotta say, Return of the Sentinel was one that really jumped out to me. Yeah, I'm happy to play um, any track. You know, I'm happy to Return of the Sentinel would be great. Hellfire Thunderbolt, anything, anything that you think that the, your listeners would, uh, you know, like to hear. Yeah, sounds I'm cool great. With. Definitely gonna play that. Uh, sincerely, thank you for your time sitting down and talking with us and uh yeah I, i'm really looking forward to seeing y'all live whenever uh we can get everything back up and running again uh everybody please go check out kk's priest the new record sermons of the center and uh yeah man, it's, it's been a real pleasure thank you for everything you've done for heavy metal and uh it's it's a real uh, pleasure to, to see you keep doing it uh thanks a lot carl and uh yeah big thank you to all the fans for their patience and a big thank you for being on the journey this wonderful journey uh, together through the decades, um, you know, supporting this great music that we know and love, and and let's hope uh, the future's bright and we can continue, and uh, with some very very good things to come, there certainly will be from uh, KK's Priest because we're on it. Hell yeah, you are. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Carl. Take care, mate. Have a good night.
this battle He stood the test of time The challengers shriek their fury Their weapons glint in the sun With fear he's outnumbered It's time to stay So much for tuning into the highway this week. A big shout out to Reverend Guitars, Railhammer Pickups, and Earthquaker Devices. If you liked what you heard, you can follow where you can follow, subscribe where you can subscribe, and if you want to go one step further, you can support us on Patreon at The Highway with Kyle Shutt. For a few bucks a month, you can help us keep this party going, get early access to next week's episode, and even get yourself a shout out. <laughs>